Hello and welcome to the second or third part um, of actually implementing the configurable daytime configurator. Um, well, the config on how to pass all the information we get um, from our files and how to display them. And right, so where were we? Um, First of all, we had like this very cool pull request by Peeves and he actually left a couple of comments again. Um, first of all, he had like a lot of questions about the back end. I'm still on the um, front end part. So his first su suggestion was that we just use simple names for the default rules and yeah and then he got like a bit a bit confused about um, our checking of the IDs because we copy and pasted <laughs> a couple of default rules with different IDs just to make sure if it actually works to add new rules on, and that he doesn't add a rule twice uh, yeah, so, all right, so we have like a huge new comment uh, we can work on. We also have to make the whole thing deactivatable. But first we have to start up Libre Photos, of course. And I fixed like the height thing. I can't put the camera uh, I can tilt it more, but um, I can put a pillow under my chair to be a little bit higher, which is obviously a valid solution. Um, okay, so Visual Studio Code is open again, and we want a new terminal, and then we're going to CD2, Libre Photos, and then we're going to well, do the long command and I'll just use fish for that. And now it will. Oh no. I still haven't added it to systemctl. That it just it, it doesn't do it on boot. Which is good because then he would start up LibreFotos every time I boot up. Which isn't necessarily what I want. <laughs> because of course when I'm like I'm using this for uni university. I don't want to have LibreFotos running in the background, draining all my battery, because it drains a bit of battery. Like, it's not a huge amount, but it's uh, noticeable enough. Uh, and I'm just uh, realizing that I probably should put the link of the live stream into our uh, Discord server. And just figured out that the dashboard for of YouTube doesn't really scale. If you just change the width, it hides certain buttons, which is awful. And you and you would think that they like think of that, but actually no, because why not? Um, I want the video URL. All right, I got it, and now I want to open up Discord. Um, <coughs> so the, the main screen is a bit blurry right now. Um, I think it has something to do with the capture card because like my capture is actually like pretty spot on. Maybe it's also because I'm downscaling a 4K image or something and it's a pretty small window. But anyway, uh, it shouldn't always look that bad. And I will work on it. Um, but I will improve on that over time because I have to actually get some work done. Um, all right, so I got the link. The front end booted up. Now, now I just have to po post it into the chat. And it's really bad <laughs> to do this uh, on my main machine because like my keyboard is in front of my laptop. So it's like laptop, keyboard, second monitor. So I can't like easily type something in. Uh, I really have to think this more through. 
I actually did the layout now before the stream, so it shouldn't be too boring if anybody's watching. Probably not. <laughs> uh, but of course, it, it, it drags on if you watch it afterwards, which isn't ideal. Maybe I will cut it out. I think there's a feature for that in YouTube now. So are we going to scroll down to Libre Photos? No. Please stop. No! Yeah, that's fun. Uh, content, of course, and then I want the link. Where's the link? Ba -ba -ba. And then it should be on the live streams, I think, I hope. Content, live streams. Hey, we're live, amazing. Here we go. Live now. They usually um, will then delete the whole comment and then add a new one. If I'm finished with the live stream and I actually have like a proper title, but I took care of that before starting on it. Okay, so now our um, Libre Photo instance is booted up and we can work on it. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, we have to log in, of course. Oh, God. Yeah, it's obviously a very good password, admin, admin, the default we um, put there. And I will definitely work on a wizard sometime in the, in the future because, like, giving a detailed user and password is, like, the worst thing you can do as a security default because a lot of people will just keep the default user and will not change it. And that's obviously not a good idea from a security standpoint. But uh, that's not the point. We want to go down here. Down here. <gasps> oh no, it is missing. Why is it missing? Because obviously <laughs> I worked on something different. Um, I added a, a couple of um, languages off screen. So now we have to go here. We go to fish and then see the LibreFotos front end and then git check out I don't know how, how I call that branch branch list yes check out feature slash config date time tada fail to compile why oh no so um, the problem with our setup is that if you switch while you're running and like one branch has a dependency another branch doesn't have and then the web the webpack will just get confused and then just crash so we have to restart which is a nice to do if somebody's up to it um, i would love it if somebody works on that because like it improves my workflow and I don't have to think about it. Because usually it's just an option somewhere that um, you can check it, um, you can import it afterwards, but I haven't found it yet. Maybe there isn't even a, an easy solution for that, but it would be great if somebody just would look at that and the container crashed again at uh, the, the console. Still don't know what's up with that. See fish cd da da ba da ba da libre photo stalker sudo okay so we will go to the comment we got and we'll, we will actually look at, look at that so this bug still exists We're really funny I don't know why it happens but sometimes in the future we even have to add something like this like if you're not authenticated that you even, uh, still have like a top bar and see some images because some people want like to not to, to just have public images um, like when you share images on Google Photos and I uh, that's obviously obviously a obvious feature but I haven't gotten around to implementing that yet <laughs> which is like a common theme in all of this there's a lot of, lot of things to do um, Thank you for working on this, looks very nice and indeed allows future improvements. I have one suggestion, 
and one concern about the current state. The suggestion is to make the list of predefined rules to be delivered to the front end from the back end, yes, by an API call. The idea is that we come up with new types of rules such we should be able to edit it and update the model choose rule list by just one report change, yeah. Rather than requiring to make a change to both backend and frontend. I also can imagine a situation when we would want to actually make the predefined list dynamic per user, though that part is not clear to me. Uh, but for example, we could suggest some conditions, enhanced rules using exit values we pass from the actual user's data. But there are some caveats there, yeah, obviously. So the concern is about the ID field. Um, <laughs> I imagine it will make it more difficult to do customizations for the rules. Maybe we should just drop the ID field from the item JSONs. I know they're used now for the JS purpose of processing drag events and stuff. So maybe we can just have the logic here, ID of added item max existing IDs plus one, the idea of HTML tag or whatever it is, not JSON value or something like that, or and don't use it for filtering rules and effectively allowing duplicates. Or maybe do JSON comparison for equality, which doesn't have ID fields to determine if the rule has the rule to be added as a duplicate. As to the rules, I think we could start with the following default date time, original video create date time with GPS time zone, GPS date time with, the, with GPS time zone, file name, uh, video create date time in UTC, and additional to choose file system modified time, file system create time, GPS date time in UTC. Not sure if this one makes sense though. Alright, so. Um, he has some concerns about the IDs. I'm not really sure. So, in the back end, back end part, if we if you have a new entity, you usually have also like an ID part, but we also use the ID for like sorting and stuff. So the ID is now basically used to determine where the rule is within the list. Um, we will obvi obviously not use a field like that. Um, so we have to refactor that. We just go to... Um, model config date time. Um, so we have our items here. We don't want to use an <coughs> ID. And we also need the settings here, config date time and sortable item. All right. <coughs> um, and, I, and I'm still going down. It's like not great. Maybe if I would put it like in front of me, it would be easier, but still it's like completely off. Like the camera is like so much like above the monitor and I don't have like a, um, like a thing that's not, uh, that's the same height as at the monitor. If I only have like this one that's way too high. Yeah, I'm not sure on what to do about that, but there's probably some solution. I just have to Google a bit more. Um, all right, but we're back to the modal config daytime. So we're going to put in our to do's. To do, get from the back end. So, Google Copilot, can you implement that? Let's go! Why isn't he not working? No, you should just implement getting items from the back end. Los, come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, he doesn't want to do it. Um, yeah, so that's definitely one to-do we have to do. Which isn't that hard, but it will require some um, 
<coughs> merging probably. And the bigger thing is like get rid of the actual IDs because it's not what we have currently um, on the backend. So we will have like problems saving the JSONs back. <coughs> And they're obviously like misleading because they're not IDs. They're like um, part of the sorting thing. So we are going to sortable items. No, we don't need that. We need to go here. <coughs> Handle drag event. So if active over ID, then we set the new items. And then array move items old index new index so um, where do we get so active and over that's the new index and that's the old index so we want to get rid of IDs So we will just have like a second array and that's called sorting of items. Wait, we don't actually change the ID. Or maybe I'm like reading, but we don't. So we just have like to <coughs> So maybe we can just like add say that they have like an unique and identifier, not like one, two, three, four, five, but like something unique. Uh, that should work, I think. So if I'm right, then we can do something like this, A, B, C, D. Q Q one 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 and Q V E R and it still should work. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, we're going into Libra Photos, reload, and then we're going to look at the settings, obviously. Uh, scroll down. And this also still works, and it doesn't crash. I think we also had like an issue if we delete something. Delete. Ah, that was also an issue, like it wouldn't delete like always, only sometimes. Now it just doesn't want to delete at all, which is fun. All right, add rule. So that still works, but like deleting still does not work. Cannot read properties of null reading ID. So that's weird. Um, we obviously have to remove item function. Well, we actually remove the item. So I'm not sure why it's crashing. It shouldn't. So let's do a um, console log. <coughs> Reload. So we still have like three values. If I put this from 
Aha, it's, it happened again. Weird. So that works and if I go now here it still has like the same ID so we can just use like the unique identifier from the database whatever value we, we get like we also have this um, on different on other things like albums for example if we go to things why are things not showing up god damn it but I'm not, uh, ah, because it didn't finish, right? We already refactored things that it only does one query or two to like create all the albums in, um, in a new way. Uh, yeah, so, but that's not ideal. Okay, so this all works. So I think this concern isn't like really need it. Um, well, from my perspective, it's easier to like know if a rule is unique or not if you have like a unique identifier. So it should make it easier, not harder. And we can allow for dupli duplicates. Um, All right. So the next one would be like creating actual actual like um, IDs. All right. But I think we will just debug the deleting part now. <laughs> I have no idea why it's not working. So we click on that and then we drag and then it crashes. Click on that. It's like super weird that it doesn't delete it. Like, I already fixed you, man. <laughs> um, okay, activation constraint pointer. So. activation constraint. If you'd like to use other sensors such as the mouse or touch sensors instead, initialize those separately with the use sensor hook. Yes, I know. We already do that. Uh, I want that you please explain to me how pointer the pointer sensor responds to pointer events. It is the, one of the default sensors used by D&D context. Okay. Activation constraints. The pointer sensor has two activation constraints, distance constraint and delay constraint. These activation constraints are mutually exclusive and may not be used sim simultaneously. And we have used them. We used delay and tolerance, like why? <laughs> okay, so I think I will just use distance now. Distance. Five. We will like do this. Reload. Okay, now please crash. So this works great. So now we can just add and delete rules, which is exactly what we wanted. Amazing. So I think that's our first commit for the day. Um, git. Oh, so first <laughs> we remove our spamming of console log, obviously. Um, 
So what did we actually do? Okay, we put the to-do in there. Don't think we have to do this. We play around a bit with the IDs, which we now know could be just a unique identifier. The thing is, if we only save it like as a JSON blob somewhere in the database and don't actually like have a unique I entity for it, then we don't have a unique identifier by default. But I would still add one because it's good practice. And yeah, I don't think that it will cause any issues. So, um, yeah, we can just remove these. One, two, three. So we only want to add this git commit fix deleting a rule git push cool so that worked we fixed one error um, <coughs> we also apparently fixed the other one where it just said like no it's no man I'm just going to crash now um, which was probably had probably something to do a lot with like the different um, <coughs> constraint. Um, yeah, so I think what we're going to do now okay, what did I now actually push? Like my um, committing game is definitely not on point yet. <laughs> Um, I sometimes still forget like to remove certain parts. Okay, I've pushed it. Why? All right. So the config isn't an issue because we're just going to pick like um, the thingy. Um, because it will just be there by default. So now we're going to all right. For a second I thought I had like a notification. Like GitHub notifications stress me out so much because it usually means like you broke something, <laughs> but I haven't even pushed anything, so that's not a good sign. That's also why I didn't redo like a weekly release last week because like it was Christmas and I was like, no, I'm d I, I don't want to fix like an <laughs> issue <coughs> over the weekend. I do not have the time for that. Um, all right, <coughs> the suggest uh, the suggestion. Oh man is to make uh, the list <coughs> predefined rules be delivered from the backend. All right, by a backend API call. The idea is that we come up with new types of rules and such we should be able to edit and update the model choose rule list by just one repo change rather than requiring to make a change or to both backend and frontend. I also can imagine a situation where we would want to actually make the predefined list dynamic per user, though, yeah. So we already know this part. So I'm not sure here if I have to actually change anything <laughs> because he's currently working on the backend part and I don't want to like interfere in his pull request. I would just say, awesome idea, dude, let's do this. And I will now create, I think, a couple of like default JSONs, but we also still have not done any uh, everything we have to do. There are a bit more options that could be encountered here. I think that instead we could go through all elements of props item and explicitly exclude transform tz source tc report tc name rule type, then instead uh, then instead of hardcore use file property use of text, 
we could do something like setting name equals daytime rule param plus param name and use either t setting name or yet yeah, just use setting name with a space and there's no translation setting for setting name if there's no translation we will always just fall back to english that's like a nice feature um, react uh, i18 next js oh man like J javascript name pep, uh, package names are like too long i always forget them but it, it defaults to english so it's not a problem um this way we can get automatic support for showing any parameters that might be encounters even if frontend doesn't have a sp specific rule for them all right what do you think i think it's a good idea that we just print all props we don't actually have like printed out yet because like not showing anything but it's actually there's like sometimes really confusing especially if somebody wants to like add a new passing rule <laughs> and then he doesn't see anything in the front end and then he's like confused and it's like the back end is broken no no we just don't show it in the front end and um yeah so we are going to sortable item and then we have here our card descriptions so we want to iterate over unknown properties of items. God damn it, I always forget <laughs> how you can do that. Um, props dot item um, Jason iterate over all attributes and keys all right i can just do using the new objects entry method. Hey, isn't this amazing? So I can just use this one. Now he's complaining. But why are you complaining, man? It's like proper JavaScript. Then I will just use props.item. Come on. Expression expected, yes. each no or maybe it's like too new I don't know this method is not supported natively by Internet Explorer all right well if somebody complains about that then um, he can you uh, add bubble to the pipeline, but I don't. So maybe the problem is that we like use like these notation thingies. But I'm not sure, man. It's weird. Okay, maybe I will just use dot map. And then I will do like key value. Please work. Mm. 
this should also work, I guess. How do I always <laughs> print something? <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's do this. Okay, and he's... The, oh. I deleted the wrong thing. So, entries. And then we should get like an array of string and any. Yes, and then I map that key and value, so this should be a string. Expression expected, I don't get that at all. Oh, is it, uh, oh no, it's something like this, right? Haha! -ha! So key is like string and any. <laughs> I just do this. No. Can I just do this? This? Any? Hmm. Now he doesn't even try to. Okay, we'll just do use this for now and see what he prints. And I have to do this. Man, like, I'm really used to like the stream operator from Java. And it's a bit different in JavaScript. A bit way different. <laughs> okay, so we have name, guest file name, and a one. Okay, so he's spamming definitely a lot. And then we will just add these bad boys as this instead. put it back and um, it seems like value doesn't actually do anything so we will just do key dot key dot value dot key dot value or something like that string and any oh no This looks very ugly, but it probably works. And we have like ID and one and name and daytime original. And I don't need the dollar signs because we are not like formatting any strings. And I, I still lost the chat. God damn it. Uh, all right. So basically working but not completely yet. Um, I will that don't need you. And we will call this prop. That sounds a bit better. All right. Okay, so now we have all the roots printed out, um, but it's obviously not as nice as up there. But we want to exclude a couple of things now. Then instead of a hard coded use blah blah blah, we could do something like setting name equals daytime rule parameters, and then use the setting name or just setting name with a space if there's no translation. All right, so we could use the, do that, I think. 
Um, so instead of like uh, yeah so we try to find a string for for example x of tag but if we don't find any then we print something different and we will do this for all the things the thing is like we all we, we still have like to um, remove name and rule type because otherwise it will all always print out so we still have to like filter uh, dot filter and now I have to do this I dot key I think we have to do it like this because it's a string comparison. Uh, in Java we also have like <laughs> weird rules for string comparisons instead of regular comparisons because why not? Um, all right, so we now should have right, two IDs less. So now we want to um, what do we actually want to do we have so many like errors there uh, and it's always it's always such term examples it's like this function always breaks in different ways not well designed so uh, transform tc is also something we don't actually want to print um I think oh, what's called so these are not needed. And now we just we should just like yeah I think the easiest way we could do it now is like to first do like this <sighs> bah, 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 bah. Um, i18 react settings set different fallback now I get also what he wants to do like smart <laughs> um, I don't know if it returns something like null or an error or something. We will just try it. So that's fun. Uh, we will add to locals translation a new thing and we will call this rules and we will have here a couple of rules for the rules um, config daytime
There it is. Exif tag is the first one. Translation exif tag. And then we use it like this. like this and we put here like rule use exif I don't even know how I like wrote that mm, okay like this Go back. Uh, all right. Sortable item. Use file property. And we will also call this just rule. All right, two to go. I think we can put it, no, I want to split the views. Yes, awesome. So if we have like a source TC, we should also have like a report TC. The issue is that we, we iterate over the rules. So we will just split it into like two things. Um, because it's easier for now. And then report. And then transform from. Transform to Okay, cool. Remove this, remove that. Ah, okay. Now I know what 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 I did wrong. So if I do it like a comma, he will try to he will still <laughs> try to autocomplete everything, uh, which isn't what I want. Okay, so we will do this, and now we will do our mapping. So we will use uh, this dot props. I don't even know if I've actually added it yet. So I don't need that. And then I have to add, add it as a JSON rule prop. One. This should work, TM. Okay, so we, we haven't like connected it to anything yet, but we also use it as translation as a hook, as functional component. So we can use it just like that. And then it's not this dot props, but just T. I think was it this dot <laughs> this dot T? No, I don't know. I will just call it T and hope that it doesn't crash. It will crash. 
it will crash. So let's move back to Libre Photos. T is not a function. Cool. Um, All right, but I could add T like there. So <laughs> why is that working? Um, am I using it wrong? Should I use it like this? No, he does not like that. But <laughs> he's also like even finding the const. I also used this in a couple of different. Yeah, I just called it T and then photos not hidden. Oh, I know why. Um, also, I have to add like rules dot. Do your work now. He's not a function. Come on. But I have added you up here. That's also correct. Oh man. Ah, I hate cryptic errors. Or did I? Edit it into a different thing. No, no, it's exactly where I would thought it would be. Um, fun. Oh, all right. Big error, I imported it the wrong way. And now, use exif day transform from transform to. Amazing. Okay, so I think I can remove now these things. <coughs> now we just have to add a rule that isn't actually described to look how it blows up. So we have here transform to name Europe Moscow. So that's fine. Okay, so here we only print out rules ID and we actually don't print out any value. So that's not great. Missing key, so he <laughs> complains about it a lot. Um, I want to use missing stuff. Missing. Missing. Save missing will send a web valid default value based on the component children. Okay, please give me some documentation. Calls save missing key function on backend if key not found. I want to just react on it, to be honest. Oh man. 
Oh, I'm ready to get tired. That's not a good sign. Like I usually program like early in the morning. I'm not an evening per evening person, but I only had time today to do it. Now and now only. Um, but I already streamed like for an hour. <laughs> it's like an hour. It's not a long time, and I usually think I can get something done in an hour and I actually did like I fixed the bug so that's good but man I just want to find out allows null values as valid translations allows empty strings as valid translations uh, buh, 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 buh. Mm. React on missing key. So I will now do it just in a very dumb way because I'm kind of tired. Um, so we will do an if uh, like this, if. T rules. And my girlfriend is messaging me. Uh, and I <laughs> they didn't mute her. That that's what happens if you do it unannounced. Uh, so I want to tease declared, but the values are actually in red. I don't care about that. Okay, so I will put that here. Okay, why are you complaining? Come on. Why? God damn it. Sorry about that. Um, I thought I just lost the connection somehow. Okay, so I want to do Identifier expected. So I want to call a function man. So why are you complaining about this? Let's go. Then I just want to put the props in here. Uh, 
Okay, so... Expected why? I want to do an if then else. <laughs> uh, why? Okay, so now he... Why should there be a comma? I don't... Please... What do you want from me? Okay, and then I need another here. And he wants what? I don't know what the hell. Ah, because we're still like in here. Oh my god, I did it. Like an absolute champ. Okay, so it still looks fine. I still have this random ass bracket there, <laughs> which I think I can remove. But where is it? It's so weird. This one. Okay. It just got in there somehow. Okay, so now we just add a rule that isn't defined. And then th that rule should actually look kind of nice. Ah, so we already have this like ID, double, double point, and then one. So that should work, I guess. But he wanted to maybe do something different or not. Um, we could do something like setting name, blah, 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 program name, and use either t setting name. Or just setting name with a space. Yeah. All right. I think we, we did exactly that. And we show it to him with the ID. Um, I will write a comment that the ID is actually a unique identifier and not like a number for the sorting. And yeah, so the next step would be, I think, to um, finally write all the default rules down and then actually put them into the backend. But I don't know if I do that or he does that. Um, yeah, so that's still open. But I think this was somewhat productive <laughs> and I only had like one drop out now and it's actually full HD man like I get the grip of this um, <laughs> all right so we added our translation.json's sortable item config daytime so I don't think we have to do this I already uh, shown to him that he can write anything there and it, I think it will be helpful if we have like a lot of rules so I added the to do and I added now that we can have an unlimited amount of new parameters and they will be displayed somewhat nicely so that's cool and dele deleting works. So git at all, git commit, um, display unknown rules nicely. All right. So that works. Now I will write <laughs> some comments. Um, thank you for watching. If you like the work I'm doing, then you can consider. Uh, sponsoring me on github sponsors 
that keeps me motivated and uh, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.